Um, but the, the biggest thing I wanted to spend some time on is, is spending some time taking a look at the pivot grid. So the pivot grid is actually a new piece of functionality. Um, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of capabilities for, um, you know, and, and a lot of this really is, mo is moving away from a lot of the hard-coded or hand-coded charts that are in a lot of these portal pagelets for doing analysis. So, you know, you know so if you go, to go and open up some of these homepage ones, um, you know, basically there's a lot of people code that kind of stages a lot of data and then throws it into a chart and, you know, the chart really doesn't have a lot of interactivity and that sort of thing. So the pivot grid is actually something that was developed at, uh, by the PeopleSoft application development teams to solve that issue. And then it's an example of where the People Tools group actually took ownership of that and uh, plugged it in and kind of made that work. So, um, you know, so, uh, so, uh, so let's go through and um, just kind of walk through and talk a little bit about this because, in essence, you've got the pivot grid. Uh, you know, the, the basically queries feed that in there, so that's kind of nice. Um, and then the other piece is that there's two pieces to the pivot grid. And one is the pivot grid model, which is where you're actually identifying you know, what you want to do with the different fields and kind of the starting point for what that's going to look like. And then there's the pivot grid viewer, which may have the fields, the values that you're selecting and that sort of thing. Um, and there's a few things that uh, as you go through and take a look at it that you'll want to want uh, to, to, to know. So uh, so let's go and take a look at this and we'll actually go in and do that. Um, but before we do that, I actually had one other feature that I wanted to show that's a little bit unrelated. So uh, and it's not in the release notes either. So um, so if we go in here and I'm just going to pull up uh, let's actually use the saved criteria here. One of the things that you'll notice here, is that um, I have my page that has a bunch of search results in here um, on my search page. If you notice, one of the things that they added was a collapsible section for the criteria. There's a lot of criteria. So if I want to actually go right to this, I can actually collapse that and see all of that. And it's, again, it's it's something that you know it's not a huge feature in terms of you know how much work or that sort of thing, but in terms of usability, it kind of lets people get to their uh, their data a lot more quickly on these uh, large search pages. So again, I just wanted to briefly mention that as something that, uh, that your end users will see out of the box without you having to do any take advantage of that. So let's go on and take a look at the pivot grid. So uh, on the pivot grid side, um, Let's go, so it's under reporting tools is where that's put. And you'll notice that there's a brand new um, menu here for Pivot Grid. You'll also notice that instead of XML Publisher, they renamed it to BI Publisher. I actually didn't include that in there because I figure you know, renaming is not that, uh, not, not that big a deal to cover. Um, so we'll go into the Pivot Grid, and you'll see that there's the Pivot Grid Wizard and the Pivot Grid Viewer. So let's actually go in and pull something up, and let's create a brand new pivot grid. We'll call this GS um, Voucher Info. So we'll call this Voucher Analysis. So basically, as we go through here, um, you can see that that was the first step. I just kind of gave it some overview, uh, you know, some high-level information. And so you'll notice that there's, uh, I have this uh, voucher info query that I've created. And I actually, you know, it's just a standard query. One of the things, if you're in Envision, if you use Envision uh, with queries, um, you know, one of the things that I had thought that I needed to do, because Envision has this limitation, is in my query I had thought I had to create it with an aggregate function turned on so it would sum the data that I wanted to. Um, but the actual pivot table service or the pivot grid service that sits underneath all of this actually is smart enough to do the uh, to do the uh, the aggregation for me based on what I select. So you don't have to go through and do that. So I've picked my uh, my query. And so one of the things that you'll notice is it starts by defaulting, uh, knows that this is a numeric field. So it actually says, all right, use this as a value and take it and sum it. And so, great, so I have that in there. 
Um, and then you'll also notice that the other fields, it's just say, make these available used as an axis. And one of the things that you may see as you go through and do this, one of the things that we've, I've actually seen as I did some testing, is if you set up your pivot grid incorrectly and you run it, um, you actually will get some cryptic error messages that uh, basically tell you, you know, some, some, some couldn't find any data for a slicer or something like that. If you think of a slicer as really what we're calling an axis here, and that one of, there was a problem with one of the, uh, one of the columns that, uh, that you've actually put in there. So I'm going to go to the next step. So I've said I want to use all of these fields. Um, and so again, what it does is it uh, allows me to pick how I want to use it. This is very it's similar in some ways to if you're familiar with uh, pivot tables in Excel. It's somewhat similar, but one of the things you have to keep in mind is that um, it's, um, it's really built on top of the PeopleSoft database. So, um, and it's really meant to package up things that are going to be consumed in um, you know, portal page lists and things like that. So it doesn't quite have the same usability and all of the same other things that you might expect from a pivot table. But it has a lot of common features. So for example, if I just want to see a grid and I want to do, you know, and do that, I can go through and do that grid. So for example, if I want to have a grid and in my grid I have, uh, you know, my amount is going to be my y-axis. Maybe I want a vendor and also let's do the status. So we'll do the row here. Um, I can go through and do that, and if I go to the next uh, tab, I can actually preview what this looks like. So you'll actually see that I've gone through, and we can see the status as well as the vendor. If I want to actually move this up here, I can pivot that. So if there's the there's where it comes up with the name pivot grid, um, and so you can see that for individual vendors, um, I can go through and do that. If I wanted to publish this. Um, I could actually go through and save this off and then use this as the starting point for other things. So let's go back um, and let's take the, uh, let's actually change the status to be a filter and let's make this a column as well. And again, I'm just kind of walking through some of the options so you can see how this, uh, this product works. So now if I go in here, one of the things that you'll notice is I see all of my vendors there, and I see all my items coming across the top. And then if I want to, I can actually pick, okay, so let's take a look now at unposted. So now if I click on unposted, there's the data there. Obviously it's scrolling off to the side. So, um, so one of the things I can actually do is I can say show all columns, and, and, uh, and then I can actually go through and take a look at that as well. And if I wanted to, I could go in, like, like you can with a pivot table, I can move this this way. And now I can see within a given vendor what are some of the items that uh, people are ordering. And again, these are for unposted vouchers. So let's actually look at the posted ones because there's materiality for that. And we can see that as well. So that's the chart piece. And so the key piece here is that um, um, you know, if you notice, I didn't pay any attention, I'm sorry, the grid piece, I didn't pay any attention to the chart side of things. I just did everything on the other side. So if I wanted to, I could show the chart and the grid. Now in the chart and the grid, as you go through and use this, um, obviously I have my y-axis, which is having my amount. I have my filter, so there's a rule that if it's a filter for the uh, grid, and you show the grid and the chart, you also are going to use that as a filter for the chart as well. So why don't I do this? Um, so I'm going to go and uh, change it so that the status is not a filter anymore. I'm going to make this a column. And so one of the things is you, that you'll see here is I can see the vendor, and then I'll have the status as, and this is where the terminology becomes important. So if it's the um, if it's basically something that goes along with the y-axis, um, then basically it is an overlay. So the idea here is that on the inside is this gross amount, and then over top of that is uh, is, is the overlay. So I have that. Um, let's also go through, and for the item, um, what I want to do is uh, take this and. Um, let's make this the filter. 
So now I've done that. So now if I go to the next level, take a look at this, you'll see that now I have my items here. I have my status. I can go through and I can actually pick some of these different values. So I'll pick this one right here. You can actually see the data based on that. Now, I don't like my chart type that's showing up. So let's go and uh, change that. So I can actually change that right here. There's a little chart options piece down below. So right now it's showing as a 2D line chart. Let's actually do this as a 2D bar chart. Now, one of the things, so, so now we actually see this as a bar chart, so I can actually see uh, for this item, here's the amount that's been ordered by each vendor. And I can go and I can pick another one here. You can actually see all of that information that way. So again, that can be, so basically I've created the starting point for a, um, you know, for, for, uh, for a dashboard or, or something that may be interesting. So a couple of things to consider now that I've shown kind of the base feature of this is that um, obviously being able to pick the item number is not as interesting as having something that's more descriptive. So that's one of those things that's important to take a look at is, um, is that uh, you know update your queries to have the description fields in there. But uh, one of the things that I found, and, uh, and so let's actually save this first before I actually show you what I found. So I'm going to save this. And what I want to do is I want to go back to my search. And I'll show you this first one that I actually created. If I go in here, um, basically it's uh, I went in here, and you'll notice that there's two description fields in my query. So um, and so, what ended up happening, and this is something to keep in mind, is that um, this pivot uh, grid service is not smart enough to take a look at the uh, heading in query. Um, so if you're familiar with using um, query from within Envision or uh, from within uh, you know, basically anything else that's a reporting tool, what it exposes is the uh, is basically a unique field ID to make sure that um, if I pick something, um, basically, if I have a description that I'm pulling in for, in this circumstance, I was pulling the description in for the department ID, and this one's pulling in the description for the account number. So when I actually get to the next step and go through and start trying to use this, so I'll go to the next step, and let's say that I want to take my two descriptions. So we'll take uh, this description. Uh, okay, so that's all fine. Um, so this one, that one, okay, that all looks good. Um, year, okay, so that all looks good. So if I go to the next next piece where I actually define how it's used, um, and let's say that I just do grid only, just so I don't have to deal with uh, with that sort of thing. Um, so I can take this description here and put that as a row piece. Maybe I'll take this other description. Here's the other description. Also put that as a row. So I'll continue this. I'm actually not going to save it in the end, but I want to show you what I'm doing. So now if I go to next, um, so uh, what, what, what you'll see as I start using this further down is it's showing those descriptions, but there are places where those, those uh, references actually will cause errors. And it's actually in the chart versus the, the other. So if I were to pull up the chart, it would then give me a people code error that I'm using something you know, you know, that it doesn't understand the references and that sort of thing. So again, I just wanted to show that because as you define your queries, you do want to consider the fact that um, you know that that you want to have these labels uh, be something that's that, that's understandable to users, and um, and and you know, and obviously that means you'll be pulling in descriptive fields and translate values and that sort of thing in your queries as you go.